Mr. Translator. I'm still waiting. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's so, so excited to be here. My name is uh, Fadil, and I will be presenting with my partner, Foon. Uh, are you still with us? This is uh, already 5 p.m. Still awake? Stomach full already? Okay, yeah, we came from Touch 10 Games. Uh, we are going to present actually a share uh, some of the best practices that we have done in the past. Uh, the title is to scale your project and team effectively with Unity Engine. So some introduction. We are a mobile indie game developer. We develop mostly premium games for iOS and Android. We established in 2009. Uh, we are based in Jakarta. So initially we have around yeah, less than 10 people, maybe around six or seven. And then now uh, our team size has grown for about uh, 35 people, including the, the development and non-development uh, roles. So the outline of this project is to, uh, we are aiming for the, for the small developers, for, for, for those who are still uh, beginning in, the, in, in their team, uh, still creating their own team, still figuring out how to do this, how to do that. So when you are starting to get successful and then your, your team size grows bigger, your, your game grows uh, bigger. So how do we handle changes in the project in terms of uh, scale up or if we have a feature change in the, in the middle of development process? And if we stumble upon a bigger project, we require more roles, uh, filling the same uh, job desk such as multiple programmers, multiple artists, designers, and some are non-Unity users that are trying to, 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 to go into the development of the game. So how to maintain projects uh, like this. And also, if you are uh, 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 starting to get bigger again, you might stumble upon uh, uh, many projects working, on the, working at the same time, but some of them sharing uh, similar code bases. So, uh, we are trying to also share to how to develop multiple projects that, that share this, uh, this kind of uh, problems. So we'll start with the, with the team scale. When we begin the, the develop proce uh, development, when we establish our studios back in 2009, we, are, we call it the XS Extra Small Developer. So it consists of less than five people. It's a small scale. Uh, it is still a single project. All of the people in the in the studio work on only uh, one project. Uh, so uh, uh, next will be continued by my partner Poon. Hello. Okay. And for uh, extra small developers, we. We we just gonna I I'm just gonna share that one of the tools to to handle your project is using distributed version control. In Touch 10, we are using Git and we are using Bitbucket as the remote repository. Anyone here using version control? Can raise your hand. So okay, no, okay. Next. Why we are using version control? Uh, the first one is easier to maintain our project and we can record our project history step by step and then we can undo changes if there's any bugs or some error merge or error commits. Uh, and another <coughs> pros is it's easier to collaborate with within our team. Within our. So you, by using branch and merge we can handle more simultaneously development process. So, and then it's easier to handle conflict in Unity, what, Unity project. Uh, is it a bit hard to understand <laughs> to most of the audience? And next, 
What we are using is uh, Git Flow Workflow. Anyone here familiar with this Git Flow Workflow? Please raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, basically, it's a workflow with how to we use Git. It's one of the workflow introduced instead of Git Flow, and we have patch patch workflow and there's something feature brands and blah 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 blah. And one of the advantages using this workflow is we have multiple branches like masters, hotfixes, you can see it here, release branches, develop, and feature branches. Um, what it means that we can separate our code or project into a separate stable release like in here in master we can the uh, the master branches the master branch only consists of stable release like version 1 version 2 version 3 and version 4 and the release branches is for preparation like if you know release candidate yeah it's that's that's the branch so we prepare our project to release like alpha release candidate or beta release candidate we fix minor bugs and a bit polish in the project before we release it to the pro the live live version, which is the master branch, and hot fixes is when there's something there's a bug, minor bug or major bug in the live, and we can literally hot fix it, not changing a feature or implement new feature. We can use hot fix branch to. Uh, fix the live production, sorry, the live branch. And develop branch is used for uh, development head. So uh, as you can see here, development branch and feature branch is correlated with each other. So every feature goes in and goes out uh, from the development branch. So the new feature uh, cannot interact with the Live or the release branches. It is only the code to for the team to separate the what the work yeah yeah the work into specific feature, and then after the feature finish, we integrate it in the develop, and other team can pull the changes and integrate to their features. That way, we can delegate our work into multiple programmer or multiple artists and multiple. Uh, like QA or some some department without even breaking the game or the project. Uh, how to achieve this? Or we are using Source Three. In Source Three, oh, this is my work. Sorry, there's this magic button. Or just use this Git flow and wait, wait. I'll make a new one. Yeah, using this, this button, the source tree client automatically create your branch. And you can define your specific branch name. As you can see here, production branch and development branch is separated using their name namespace. And with within this branch, your development will development team development team will go in this specific branch. And after we set up the Git flow and oh 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 I think I I made a mistake because I'm making it home folder oh oh yeah okay let's skip this into this this is one of the example the live the live version this is my work 
um, eventually you you'll see that uh, sorry my laptop is a bit slow yeah this is the 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 release and the production with this workflow i can literally jump in my project into one state of the project to another and i have i can jump to my stable version of the project by looking at the tag at the at the branch so if i go to master automatic automatically the project will go to the stable version and if i go to development it will go to this specific development head and if i using feature like this i can separate specific feature I i'm working for so if like i'm use, making a match surface i'm only making match making surface in inside there and it's won't it won't break any other system in the project um, i think that's all about the git flow now i'm gonna back okay i think it's a bit hard to understand right next uh, instead, uh, after using git flow workflow our team using a uh, uh, specific folder management for handling our projects. In this, we have editor scenes, uh, a scene that purely dedicated to make assets or prefabs, and a game scenes to run the game and test scene to test the features or the assets. This is some um, the example. This is my project uh, like this. So inside here, I have a specific scene that I made purely for specific feature. Like this, I'm testing a UI for the reward system. And only in this scene that I, I do mainly my work for just the UI, syst UI system reward. And how about the, the main one? The main one, I'm using this scene It's just um, an empty scene that will load all the prefab and dependency when the game runs, or the platform runs, or the app runs. So it will load all the system. I cannot demo it because I don't have internet here. Sorry. So basically, this is the editor scene and the test scene combined into one. And when I want to update <coughs> the, the prefab, I, I just change it and check into the prefabs. Ah, maybe using this is better. Ta -da. Uh, so after I'm updating my work and my prefabs, I just apply it and it will save as assets. And then I'll load all the assets. And if you look at here, I'm using a link prefab to link all my assets that has been edited in editor, editor scene instead of I'm using a nested prefabs. Okay, that's about the uh, git flow and the uh, folder management. And then we go bigger to small development team. It consists of five to seven development member and we handle a bigger scale and, but it's still this single project within the studio. Maybe the next slide will be explained by Fadil. Hello, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, 
so in the next uh, the the next iteration of your development of studio you usually will create a bigger games that contains quite many of data so usually when you, when you create your design and then you store it into unity there are a couple of ways to do that right the, one of the, the, the way is to, when your designer, for example, design your database in a spreadsheet, and then uh, it will be stored as prefabs. So usually the designer design the database and then have the programmers to, to store it into the Unity. Hey, I got this database, please store it for me. So it's, it's quite good, it's quite nice. Uh, uh, for example, I will store it in Unity. <clears throat> oh, the resolution is so for example yeah. Hmm? Yeah, for example this one I have a, a database I have a prefab of three enemies that contains uh, the enemy data script that will store the, the data of your project. So usually in the, in, the, in the earlier stage of your project, the designer will give the, the database and then you put it one by one, like how much is the health, how much the projectile, how much is the damage. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, quite good because when, when you use the, this and then you, you, you store this as a prefab, you can then instantiate it directly into your game. However, there are some uh, issues regarding this game, <clears throat> uh, regarding this method. So it's a direct, but it's difficult to, to, to look for a data relationship in your game. You don't know that when your health is uh, 500, when you have another database of weapons, how much uh, the, uh, the damage will dealt to your, to your enemy, something like that. And also it's not a, a platform agnostic. I mean, when you put the database inside the prefab, you will not know uh, you will be bound to, to the, the format of uh, Unity. But sometimes you don't want that because you, you want, for example, the database to be stored into a server and then you fetch it uh, into a Unity. So it's not uh, really uh, uh, soft, it's quite uh, rigid. And also maintaining integrity is quite challenging because, for example, if I want to, to first I, I put the database with health and then with uh, damage and then it, in the middle of the development process, you, uh, when the team tests your game and then the, the designer thing, no, the health is too big. It's too, uh, you need to adjust it, you need to lower it. So they will give you another brand new spreadsheet for you to fill again in the prefab. So it's, uh, it's quite a tedious process. It's, it feels like a chore, especially for the programmers. So we might want to reduce the barrier between the designer and, and and this prefab, we want the data to be uh, to be singular. So when the designer creates the data, it will be automatically updated into your game. So one of the solution is uh, to use uh, serialized data with text file. Usually, it's uh, in the format of XML and JSON. So by using this, you you reduce the duplicate database on development by when you create your uh, spreadsheet, you convert into JSON and then store it directly as a file. Uh, so integrity is maintained because of that. And it only requires small work for inputting data to the game. So for example, instead of uh, storing the prefab directly into your game, so I will use a kind of text file. Here I use JSON. Uh, I use a JSON file so containing the, the, the list of database that you want to be imported to. And then we use uh, some kind of a scriptable object, uh, sorry, editor script. Who use editor script? Yeah, I think it's a very good feature. So one of the script is, I use a, a loader. Yeah, basically it's just a map the, your your JSON object to, to a class called enemy data. So you know the enemy data contains the 
it uh, contains the, the, uh, the database that you want to store. So by using the, the editor script like this, so I have I have a method. Uh, I created a method to to search for 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 the database loader. I have to search all the prefabs in my game that contains the enemy, and then you you get the component and that you assign the the data from the database in your code. So it's just when I uh, look at this enemies manager. So I have this uh, button assign all enemies data. So here it's empty. And now, when we prepare the, the database text, and then we, we, we do the procedure of that, so the database is automatically uh, filled into your game. So what the designer can do is that when he finish the spreadsheet, or when he update the spreadsheet into your game, you will then just convert it to JSON, put it into your game, and then run the script to update all the database. So there's no need for us uh, programmers to, to, to to do the repeated process of update and update. So it, it uh, speed up the, the testing process of your game. Yeah, the drawback is that uh, there's some drawbacks that you have to agree first on the database format be before you proceed, because if you change the database format, you might uh, require more work as well. And errors on serialization are expected sometime when you convert from, from, for example, Google Spreadsheet to, to JSON, and then some of the Boolean are not recognized correctly in the game, so you have to do some uh, data cleaning for them to be recognized by, the, uh, by your parser, either it's XML or JSON. Okay, next. Yeah, when, 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 when you move to bigger project, usually you will have a multiple roles, uh, such kind of uh, for example, uh, multiple programmers, multiple artists working on a single project. So uh, there will be another uh, uh, management that needs to be done in your uh, project. I think Fun will explain this. Okay, about code management. The ideal goal of code management is you have this low coupling and high cohesion. What it means, uh, I'll show you a sub demo. What happened? No. No. Ah, okay. Mula is being weird. Okay. Okay, this is a uh, first I load a uh, high coupling and low cohesion code. Save, blah, 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 blah. It's this, in this scene, I made a simple. Okay, I'll update the layout for a moment. Like this. <gasps> Ah, just the UI. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I have this gun. Then this gun can shoot, and when it shoot, it will play audio clip and play the using an audio source and update the UI system like this. Tada! Bang! Bang! No sound. Yeah, like this. It's, it's just a simple, normal gun. And this is the code. But, uh, what I mean by high, co uh, high coupling is this gun is de very dependent to the audio clip and the, and the audio source and the UI system, the text. And if we remove the, the text, it will break the demo, just like this. Because of what? There's a null, null reference. So we cannot build it. Uh, da -da. And the console, null reference exception. And nothing happening, because we literally have no input. Okay. That's what it, it means by high coupling. 
So if you change something or something bad happen, it will destroy all your other system. And what it means by low cohesion, as you can see here, this gun is very smart. He can play an audio instead of shooting. He can update an UI instead of shooting again. It's very, very smart gun. And it runs a coroutine too to, up, to update the, the UI. Yeah, I think it's very, very impractical. If you remove the audio clip, it, it won't run any, yeah, it's the same ref, null reference exception. And how he, we handle this is using this. I'll go to low coupling and high cohesion. Example, this is, I, I have a low coupling gun. I can define my input into this UI. Oops, I didn't in add any audio, so I just add it here. But, uh, and suddenly it plays sound. How we are using this? Even if I remove the UI or remove the UI, you can still hear the sound because I can map the input into input manager. Oops, sorry. Wrong, wrong scene. Yeah, like that. How we address this? This, I also will use the code. First of all, using low coupling gun. As you can see here, there's a lot of scripts here. Yeah, this is just a normal gun. He can only shoot, nothing, nothing else. This is a gun. But as you can see here, I'm using events. So when this gun shoot, it will send an event that will be subscribed by other system. Like this. As you can see, if we remove the audio, it's so there's there will be no rifle. And the event will be subscribed by the audio manager. And in audio manager, we will uh, define the right audio clip for the rifle sound. As you can see here, if, we, the, if the gun shoot, the audio manager will listen and will play this method, play gun sound effects. With play, which is, will, will play this clip. Okay. As you can see here, in the audio manager, we can define this clip. We can easily change the, the audio clip within the system. Because we separate only audio manager handles the audio thingy and the gun only know about shooting. It's the same with the UI system. As you can see here, I can drag and drop my UI system. And I have a UI manager here that literally do the same. It subscribe to the event of gun shoot and then it update the UI behavior like this. So the system will be very, very independent one another and the input manager will handle the button. Like this. Uh, so if we listen to the button click, it will shoot the gun, this gun. So it's, it's just like that. By using these prefabs, I can se separate my teamwork into separate feature. And as you can see, uh, using the fe feature branch, I can separate the, the work and delegate the work to another programmer or another team or another outsource team. That, that's what it means by low coupling and high cohesion system. OK, back to the presentation. And next, that's the idea of code management, but sometimes we want to push it further. In Tosten, we are using this dependency injection. It's uh, one of the design pattern in programming. We are using this strange IOC, U-frame and Synject to achieve this. Uh, we mainly use strange IOC to achieve dependency injection in Unity. So first of all, what is DI? What is dependency injection? 
this you can see we can push the low coupling further by using interface so if I have some service and I need the implementation of some service I can just make a new some service and then in that service we can perform tests and what if we want to change or update the implement implementation of some service I have uh, the real the real application that that happened like this uh, no my